you don't mind, we'll just get your stuff out of the way and then um, we can finish our stuff. Um, I guess the, the biggest thing that we had discussed at our last meeting, but we haven't, we haven't voted on it because we didn't have it posted. So tonight we would be making that request. Um, and you guys chime in if I'm not speaking correctly. But um, we were looking to discuss with you the extension through the end of the fiscal year. So the end of, uh, so uh, June 30th of uh, 23. So we have the, we have six year contract that I just finally got to you, Mike, today. <laughs> That's fine. So just for the for the group to know that uh, Molly and I spoke um, a couple, uh, probably just a, about a week or so ago, Molly, maybe a little longer than that, um, about the intent to extend to that period of time. And uh, Mike and I briefly sp spoke about it, and we didn't have any concerns on that time. I think the original conversation centered around extending for that shorter period of time to give the town uh, some time to just make sure we were going to be in the right heading in the right direction in terms of our staffing with the uh, changes that were made in Holyoke. And uh, we're definitely improving and heading in the right direction. So we're comfortable in terms of doing that because things are moving in the direction we anticipated them to go. Okay. Um, so the, the only things I had, Mike, is part of that, if, um, if we could just talk about it is, uh, if, <laughs> um, just just a couple things, just the concerns. Uh, I just wanted to follow up with you. I know you were going to look into it, but the status of what's happening with the supervisor here, because um, that was a critical role in this process, and we were you were going to look into it. We had been told that it might potentially be one of our medics that's here now. I guess who's a supervisor for you? Um, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that we had a brief conversation about that, Mike, and um, you had some concerns about that. So we've tabled that conversation and working to identify a number, uh, an another individual to be that key contact person for you. So we're still working through that. Someone that's on a more permanent basis, that's staffed on, uh, that's staffed there on a permanent basis, that's more familiar with it. Um, so we're still working through that. That is an open agenda item right now. Okay. But so not forgotten. Okay. Do you foresee that we would be able to get that into process for, you know, the first of the year, do you think, or is that too soon? Just because there's the, you know, the requirements of the contract for getting data done. So we haven't, you know, we need to get up to date on the, the calls for, we got through, I believe, through June of um, 22. So just getting caught up on that. Maybe we could do one for, you know, for this contract, July 1st through, you know, for 31st, if that's okay, and because I know you guys are, are swamped, but just like so no, I, the data should be running to you electronically on the 15th of every month. Uh, because I am getting that report, I'll confirm that it is that I believe you're part of that email group. Um, and then we're still we still have the year to date more formal report. Um, all of that data has been um, done and completed up until the end of October. Uh, we don't have November done because it's so close to the end of the month. That's fine. It should be done fairly quickly. So I can forward those reports off. To, I can forward the year to date report off to you, Mike, as a calendar year to date. And then I can go back and pull the um, more spreadsheet like report that we generate from you that comes out on the 15th of each month. And you I can check forward that. those off to you and that should get you caught up um, yeah. immediately. I'd appreciate that because I, I, I haven't, I haven't seen it. I'll go back through my emails again, but um, okay. I'll check in my spam as well, but I have, uh, not receive one that I know of unless yeah. is it coming from somebody other than you Mike or is it coming from you it's coming from our server um so it's automatically generated so let me go back and um check on those reports and Evan should be getting them as well he's on the yeah. distribution okay. list too so that we had multiple people on that distribution list but I'll go back and confirm um and I'll do that this evening I appreciate that oh no problem I'll check with Evan too because he hasn't um usually we we share that information too. So if if it's our, our it's probably, you know, it could be something we missed. Yeah, and it's definitely the 15th of every month that's coming out um, because I keep an eye out for it. But I'll, I'll like I said, I'll go back and uh, re-forward them to you. Okay. Yep. Uh, the, the other part was, um, I just wanted to go over just to have a discussion with you, uh, seeing how Robert's here as well. Um, so the payouts for uh, coverage by Northampton. We, what we did, and that's why I had requested to hold off on 
you know, thinking about it, we were going to pay for a contract that wasn't even ended. So we kept that second half. Um, we obviously it's still budgeted for the year, but I've been pulling the funding to pay for the Northampton coverage out of that. So I just wanted to make sure that if if we extend the contract until June thirtieth. Are you okay with that just being that difference of those expenses? I can get you copies of all, you know, all the um, uh, the invoices that have been submitted to our, you know, accountant and treasurer, the checks that have been mailed out to Northampton to pay yep. their staffing. Just yeah, just send, just send the just send the supporting document to us so that we can reconcile it internally from accounting perspective, and then we'll go from there. Pretty simple. Okay. And then we can do it as an offset to payments or however you want to do that. And Rob, I know that you um, are up to date in terms of uh, where we are from a rebate perspective. You're muted. You're muted. Oh. There we go. Better. Um, Chief, I know I put this in a brief email, but for the whole group, um, as of uh, December, or as of, through the end of November, um, well, I'll back up. The rebate for the prior year ended up calculating at just on, just under one hundred and three thousand yep. um, dollars. To date, we had built. We've now billed through December, and the town has paid us through November. So there's one invoice outstanding for twenty four thousand uh, some odd dollars. Um, everything else had been paid for. So that one hundred and three thousand dollar subsidy uh, or rebate that's out there we can offset that against any of the, the the months that you'd like it to be offset against we can offset it against december we can offset it against you know the january forward time frame um however you'd like us to to treat that um we can do it all you know net it down to to one number we can net it down to a monthly number however you'd like us to approach it sure. in the past You're locked up, Robert. Um, we settled down to one net number just for, just for the group. Um, what was that? You locked up. Okay. So in the past, we had net. Uh, <laughs> um, can you hear me okay? I have, no, I have nothing else going on the computer right now. It's your uh, kids. Your kids are screaming video. <laughs> <laughs> As you say, Jack's at work, so half of, <laughs> half of our streaming group is not here. I'm going to try. Okay. I'll try stopping video and seeing if that does anything. Did that work? Yes. Okay. So maybe it's me streaming video. Um, uh, so <laughs> I'm not sure where I cut out. Um, we can do what we've done in the past, where we where we offset the rebate against whatever's left on the contract. Um, so we can net that down. Um, we can add up 103 against you know five plus months or roughly five months of 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 subsidy dollars, four and a half months of subsidy dollars going forward. If that's the way you'd like to to handle it, just sure. let us know. Um, we could offset it against starting with December if that's easiest. Um, whatever works best for the committee and and the town administrator. Say we submitted the 24,000 December. Yeah, so they had sent the invoice. I. Had thought that that had been cleared up. I had sent an email um, to the, the person who sends out the invoices and it was sent to the town administrator again. Um, so I asked them to make sure it comes to me. That's been submitted now, so you should be seeing that back anytime now. Um, Carolyn, Carolyn forwarded it to me. Uh, it was originally going uh, to David Nixon's old email. That's why there was that hold up. So I had sent it, I sent an email requesting that the mailing address and the email address I'll be my my office and my emails. Um, it it got messed up again last month for some reason, so I I uh, requested that. I I submitted as soon as I get it. So okay, I'll I'll change it again in our system. Uh, but I know Boris, who sends out the email, um, it's possible that he just used last month's email as a template and then just put in the uh, put in the current invoice. But I'll I'll talk with him again. Okay. Yeah, Sorry I sent an email a follow up email back just to remind. That. So that should be be there. Okay. Um, so the again, Robert, how how are you? So I I'll, I'll make copies and forward you all the invoices from Northampton thus far. Is that something you'd like to see before the 
end of the year, would that be helpful? That way we can factor in, because that, that if we're gonna actually take it out of that contract, then that's gonna impact uh, when we should probably pull the trigger on, you know, the, you know subtracting the 109,000 or else we would be getting a check back from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I'll forward you those, all those invoices that we just processed and uh, you can see where we're at. I think we're, okay. I think we're caught up as of now. Okay. Yeah. If, if we can get the, get those or a summary of them, yep. um, that'd be helpful. And then we can, we can figure out the best way to do it. Okay. okay. And speaking under Phantom then, since we last met, um, it sounds like the staffing has been much more stable. Is that right? Here. I'll have Jim speak to that um, individually, Molly, because you, you are correct. It is a lot more stable. It's become more stable in all of our systems across the board. Yeah, with the loss of Dave, um, it did take a little impact, um, you know, losing him for two shifts. Uh, we were able to move a couple of people around. Uh, we also had one of our part-timers who's been picking up a lot of the weekends. Uh, he's in school during the week. So he's been working the Saturday and Sunday. So it's uh, really only left us one day a week that's uh, open. Um, which we're able to, you know, find some part-timers to fill in that when we can. So it's, it has secured pretty well now. The only, the only question I have for you, and I, I think I had spoken with you, Mike, about is I have not met that new gentleman for Saturdays and Sundays. Um, so I just, it, it would be nice just because I have that responsibility to answer to the oversight committee to ensure that who we have moving into these roles is, um, basically up to par for us. Um, so I, I have asked, he does Saturdays and Sundays and I haven't been in here. Um, so I will make an effort to try and come in here and meet with him, but there was no introduction or anything. Um, I, I just want to ensure that we at least get a, you know, a face to face quickly. Uh, cause that's our, that's our, it's my responsibility and my deputies to, to do that. So if we could make sure that that happens, it'd be greatly appreciated. Yeah, I can give him a call tomorrow. Um, I know he's in school Monday through Friday. I'll see what his school schedule is because I'm sure they're probably coming up on break. Um, so he can, he can get in and meet with you during the week. Okay. Do you have any background information on him of where he comes from or like what his experience is time? Oh, he was he, he had worked for us in our Holyoke operation um, and then left because of uh, some management uh, disagreements, I guess we should say. As a um, medic or as a basic? As a medic. Yeah, he's a medic. He worked in the Spring, Springfield area and then he worked in Holyoke. Um, and now he's going to school for, uh, I believe he's been trying to get his truck driver license, what he's into right now. Um, but he's uh, he's a pretty good medic. He's pretty solid. Um, he's only been a medic about three years, I believe. I'd have to double check on that. Um, but uh, that's a pretty solid background. Okay. If I may, this is, is the advanced life support uh, 24-7 here in Hadley at this point? Yes. So there's always a paramedic on duty? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, I think that was that was pretty much, I don't know if you guys have anything else. Those were pretty much my only questions. Um, I don't know, did you want to, are, are you comfortable with that extension? If we were to have paperwork together, is that something you, us or are you good to go th through June 30th? Um, so, Chief, are we talking about an extension to June to through June 30th or an extension after right. that? So the, well. Yeah, so the complete FY23. Uh, so we would obviously we would fill out a new contract with you to go through it. Nothing would change. That's how it was written in the contract. Um, yep. So, is that acceptable to you? Because we would be making a, a we would be voting tonight. Uh, yep. if the group so chooses, and we would present that to the. So I just want I just for clarification, because you cut out, we're talking about just finishing up the FY twenty three agreement as it is right now. Correct. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's fine. And you're good with the contract as is. So keep everything as is. Yes. We don't see any need to change anything. Okay. Um, and with the addition of the Northampton assistance, keep that in there as well too. Yep, I think we're in agreement on that. In the event we need to do it, um, it hasn't been uh, necessary over the last uh, month or so, if I remember correctly, or three weeks. Mm -hmm. 
And then in terms of, you know, I mean, obviously it's December, so we're making sure we're covered for the next six months, but it won't, uh, time will go by quickly, as we all know. Uh, and June will be upon us and we'll be looking at FY24. So, you know, just in terms of conversations at that point, what's your timing on needing to have clarity on that? Um, I think we'd like to get into some time in the first quarter, Molly, to have a conversation relative to that, that February timeframe, mid Q1. Um, there's a couple of things in the industry that's kind of shaking out that will impact things. That from a finance perspective, there's three main things which are real big changes that are happening. One of them is as of November 1st of 2022, there was a, uh, a decent increase in the Massachusetts Medicaid rate which will help with the return or have to mitigate some subsidy related increase. The second thing is as on, we're expecting as it sits right now a net, Rob, I think because Medicare is supposed to call on a cut coming up January 1st, but they've talked about an 8.7% increase in Medicare rates for ambulance providers, but Medicare might take back 4.7%, 4% of that. So it might be a net 4.7, uh, but also doctors are getting hit. Everyone's getting hit and Congress is trying to fix that um, kind of as we speak and slam something through by the end of the year. The second thing is uh, there is still this ongoing project with the state um, for, we're calling it a Medicaid match uh, program that's only eligible for private ambulance providers in the state that the state is supposed to provide additional revenue in terms of a higher reimbursement structure for emergency-based Medicaid patients as well. So there could be a double bonus coming back to the industry from that perspective, which will then allow for uh, mitigating. Uh, we think this will help mitigate some of the uh, significant inflation factors that are you know, being presented to us over the, past, the course of this past year. I think by that February timeframe, we'll have a very good understanding of where that Medicaid match program is gonna settle. And we'll obviously know where Congress is at uh, by the end of this year uh, to know what the impact is gonna be um, for us, whether it's gonna be that full 0.8.7% or it's going to be a net 4.7% uh, as of 1-1 one, one of 23. And Mike, so. I'm just, uh, just uh, intellectual curiosity. Uh, why would, is the state providing something for private ambulance services as opposed to across the board for the municipal ones as well. Yeah, it's it's very bizarre. And it, it's actually uh, what's happened is, is that there are special programs that the Medicaid uh, programs have worked with on the hospital industry. The hospital has done this. Yep. The SNF industry has done it as well to boost rates and to allow for the um, feds to come in and, and still support that with a higher percentage match than the normal federal funds. So what happened is in the technicality in the language only allowed um, private and nonprofit and non-municipal based providers to enjoin themselves to that benefit. It's been a very complicated process because it was supposed to include emergency and non-emergency uh, transportation. So there's states such as Tennessee, Louisiana, um, and, and other states around the country that have jumped on, onto this program and have been running it for a few years now. Uh, when Massachusetts jumped onto the program, Medicaid, Medi HHS stepped in and said, whoa, we're pulling back on the non-emergency stuff and it's only going to be for emergency clients and not non-emergent. So the delay for us is the feds are rewriting the program and going to be pulling some benefits away from providers but in narrowing the scope of the program. So it's just how the federal legislation is worded uh, to allow it to happen this way. Okay, thanks, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, we were curious about it as well too. And um, the, um, in order for this to happen, Mass the legislature in Massachusetts had to pass specific regulatory language to allow Medicaid to do it. And at that point in time, it was very clear that municipal-based agencies were not going to enjoy that benefit because of the way the feds wrote their statutory requirements. It is bizarre. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'd expect us then to um, 
schedule a contract discussion meeting in in kind of the end of February timeframe? Yeah, and I think at that point, we'll have a very good understanding of what is going to shake out uh, fiscally for 2023, given the uh, positive things that are happening. There's still additional conversation going on at the state level with ARPA dollars and other things that are happening to offset ongoing costs and inflation-related expenses for a number of different, of all EMS agencies across the Commonwealth, not just private. So Mass Ambulance, um, Mass Association of Fire Chiefs, those groups are working legislatively to, to work on something that's going to probably be brought, but now they have to just wait for the new administration and it probably wouldn't pop until uh, FY24. Mike, I just have one last question for you. I'm so sorry. Um, while you're while you're out getting uh, chopped apart, <laughs> <laughs> um, chain of command, will I be speaking with uh, Chris or Robert or Jim or who will it'll be? It'll be Jim. It'll be Jim. But you know me, Chief. I'm usually down for a day or two, and then I'm back up for uh, for oxygen pretty quickly. Yeah, that's why you keep going back in to get surgery. So take a break, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Strategy. I'm in orthopedics there, Mike, you know. <laughs> hey, if you get a solution for chronic arthrofibrosis, let me know. Because no one does. So while you're while you're thinking, because I'm sure you'll be doing that while you're even knocked out getting cut up. Um if, I just wanted to ask you to just think about so I understand we stole Dave from you, and I apologize, but not really. Um <laughs> 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 I still um, like you, even though you did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask, is there, uh, are there rules? Is there any reason why if you get caught in a pinch during a daytime when he's on shift that we couldn't shift him over um, with your EMT basics? If, if you had to reduce to an EMT basic truck, is there any reason why during his shift he couldn't get on board and act in medical capacity on your, on your bus? So Dave, technically, it's a question if he has the equipment. That's the first question, to be able to use the equipment at the advanced level. Uh, Dave's still an employee of ours. Um, and so the only condition for any situation like that, and we do do this with other departments, is that whoever is working for Hadley at that time would fall under the quality assurance components of our program. So they would be subject to um, medical review from whether it's going to be Cooley or Bay State, but obviously 90% of the time it's going to be Cooley. So whether uh, Dr. Morse or Sarah was to flag something, then they would have to fall under our guidelines. And if there was a serious incident, then the state would come back to us to dish out what would be the appropriate corrective action plan given the situation. So. The big thing for the Commonwealth and OEMS is that there is a, a quality assurance component and oversight going on, but we know the caliber of medic that David is, that that would be a, a very bizarre situation if we were to have ongoing clinical uh, quality concerns with David. Yeah, so I was just wondering if that's something you would consider, uh, just because there's been a few times where, you know, he's working, uh, Hadley Action Med 1 Ambulance is sitting in here with all the medicals, you know, acting as, you know, it's basically just sitting there ready to go as an ALS ambulance. But normally there's like a med two that comes up and covers with, you know, two EMTs. So I don't know. Yeah, that's no problem. We could yeah. work on just, you know, if you get in a pinch, he's on shift, on shift for 12 hours. I understand he would have to be under your quality control. And certainly maybe we could figure out, um, like he, he's, he's being covered under Hadley's insurance. So he would have to get paid from Hadley, you know what I mean? So if I would something say, happened. I would say he's under our umbrella for yeah. us, you know, as well as whatever quality things that he would fall under for you. So I was just wondering if that's yeah. something we could, you could think about and maybe we could put a plan together as a, you know, a secondary. So rather than having to bring Northampton in, we Dave's working the day shift, 12 hours, and we could, you know, he could I think it could be something as simple as a simple member of under, memorandum of understanding okay. that he's able to and that he understands that, yes, he's employed by Hadley. He is certified by the, listen, he's certified by the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. He happens to be employed by Hadley. 
He's been given authority to practice under Cooley's and also under Bay State system uh, mm -hmm. for medical control. So yeah. there's nothing that prevents him from doing what we're talking about. Okay. Yep. That's very like, simple. That like a good option potentially to fill gaps. Definitely. Absolutely. I would even, in all honesty, if I knew it was coming. So Jim, if I knew it was happening, I would even bring him in on overtime. Figure out payment of it after. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's. I think it's that important to try and keep that staffing a little. So. Yeah. No, it's a good option. Yep. Hopefully, we don't have to go there um, at the way things are looking right now. Mm -hmm. um, right. But you know, let's just start. Uh, we'll we'll keep plugging forward. Plan. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Fine. Anything else, Chief? Commissioner? <laughs>